Hi, it's Melissa with Messy Missy Creates. I thought I would show you some things that I just got from May May Made It. I um, have been a member of her Stamp of the Month Club for probably a couple of years now. I've used them for a variety of things. I have not actually made many cards with them though, and I'd like to start. I'm, um, this, I believe, yes, this is the one I just got in the mail today. Um, and so this is her July stamp of the month. Um, it is so cute. You know, everything's lemons right now, right? And let's see, let me see if you can see this without the glare. I, after watching her um, video, she puts out a video when she, um, when she reveals the stamp set for the month. And I know that some of the things that she said was that it was designed to, obviously this is a lemon shape. Well, it could be a lime, but these slices are designed to be any of the citrus. Um, they could be orange, it could be lemon, lime, you know, you name it. And then there's, um, sentiments that kind of go along with both. Lemon, lemon tell you, or dropping you a lime, um, zest wishes, aren't you the sweetest, and life with, let's see, life would be sour without you. And um, she puts in so many little detail pieces also. This is something, I'll show you that later, that actually isn't part of this, but she designed it so that you could make an actual orange, like the outside of an orange, if you use like a circle punch, and this could be the little navel or the, you know where the stem was attached. And you could actually stamp it on a die cut and then there's extra little uh, texture stamps and things. Anyway, so you could make an, an outer, the, like a whole orange. Ooh, I'm stumbling with my words today. Anyway, I wanna stamp these today with you and just try them out. Um, I do apologize for the glare. Let me see if I can, there's a fine line between enough light and glare. Okay, this was last month's and I have not shown you this obviously. This one is peachy. Now they are in Chilton County, which is in Alabama and near Clanton, it's in Clanton, near Montgomery, near Prattville, somewhere in there. And they are very well known for their peaches. So this is, you're the peachiest, just peachy, your kindness left me speechless, sp 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 speechless. <laughs> um, we really appreciate you, appreciate you. Um, anyway, it, it's really cute. There's a little um, flowers. I'm just now growing a, well, it's not a peach tree, but it's a nectarine, so kind of similar. I was interested to see what these flowers look like, the little branch with the flowers. To me, that also looks like a dogwood. What do I know, right? Um, I'm just learning about trees, but anyway, the little flowers, you, you can do that one separately and then color it, cut it out, and then um, maybe put it on top so that you could have a, a dimensional. Um, she does not have dies with her stamp sets, but she does give you a free SVG file if you have a cutting machine, like a, I have a Silhouette, um, or you know, you could use a Cricut or whatever. Um, you just download the cut file, and you can cut it and then stamp it on the cut. I don't have access to my machine right now. I don't have it set up, so I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm just gonna fussy cut or just stamp them as backgrounds. Look at the detail on this. Can you see that? Look at all the insides. Look at all the little squishy parts of the, of the inside. Isn't that awesome? I also wanted to show you a few other things I just got. She just had a 4th of July sale and I got a few other things. Um, 
Let's see, I got a little mini scoreboard because the one that I have is, good grief, it is probably 10, 12 years old. And it's, it's big, and so it's not very practical for, you know, sitting on the desk, especially if I'm going to do any kind of videos with it. Um, this is a We Are Memory Keeper. And then I definitely will hang on to the backing of this because um, even though I know a lot of the dimensions, um, it does give you some really good... Uh, paper dimensions, maybe even the envelope, what size paper you need to start with. And you may or may not be able to see that through the plastic. And uh, anyway, but this one will be very handy for, you know, scoring card bases and things like that just right on my desk. Um, it is a seven by, um, very good question seven by five and a half. And then this is the little score, it just snaps on. It slides and snaps. So anyway, this is also good for making, um, if you wanna make like a wood green background or um, some kind of panel backing, what do you call that, beadboard. That's what I would like to make soon. Maybe in another video. I got, let me dig in my little envelopes here. Isn't that precious? Let's see, there's one more piece to this. Now, there is many more pieces to this. I did not get all of them. I was trying to restrain myself a little bit. But I thought that would be fun to play with. I have no idea how I'm going to use those yet, but you know. Sometimes you just need a tractor in your world, right? Um, these are Elizabeth Craft Designs. Um, she does not carry many dies, but she does carry these and a few of the Lawn Fawn dies, which I really like as well. But see, you can see the different, all the different pieces. So I, um, I thought that would be fun for us to assemble maybe. And that, and then getting a jump start on Christmas because it is July, right? I, the little elf is so cute. Isn't he precious? And look at all the little pieces. And look how they're separated. So you can do the face and the hands. You can do that in like a flesh color. Oh, I love having the background. Um, so basically this is the back of the head and then you attach the face and then it gives you a place to attach all the pieces um, rather than having to cut your own. Look at these little, um, I wanna say little overalls. I'm sure that's not what they call them. But anyway, oh, the little, yep, yeah, little legs and um, the little suspenders are so cute. Anyway, yes, we will be doing something with that soon. It does not necessarily go with the barn, however, you know, maybe Santa's gonna drive a tractor this year. You just never know. And I actually thought, um, well, because to me, barns, I think of fall. Um, and then I also think of a red barn in the snow. Maybe because I live in Florida and I never actually get to see that. So I was thinking that I might even be able to incorporate this into a winter scene. Uh, maybe it's where the reindeer, you know, maybe it's the barn where Santa stores the reindeer. Who knows? Um, you just never know. Also, um, like I said, she carries some of the lawn fawn. Um, I've already gotten a couple of them, but um, I did actually get a chance to go up to her store. She has a brick and mortar store in Clanton, Alabama, and we got... To go up there in April and that was really great um, it was actually my second time meeting her in person and that was a lot of fun and her staff and her husband anyway lawn fun these are fall dyes or fall leaves and actually they don't have to be fall that one might look like fall um, 
I have another sunflower dye set that I love the flower, but the leaves on it to me, let's see what brand was it. I want to say it was one of the older Spellbinders. And to me, I grow sunflowers and I know how huge their leaves are in proportion to the flowers. So the leaves that came with that sunflower dye just to me were not big enough. I think this one would work. Um, and you know, they're only gonna be fall if you do them out of fall colors, right? So, but that is my plan, cause I love fall. And then these are some little, what would they be, birch trees? So, not exactly sure what I have planned for those, but I know that um, I'm thinking some snowy scene. There's a little cardinal here, which I love cardinals. We have a little cardinal family that I've talked about before. One more thing I got. This is um, Dress My Craft brand, and it is a punch. Um, it's like a border punch, and she has several, um, several different styles, designs, I guess would be the right word. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm looking, that scoreboard might have been a little envelope maker, too. That's cool. Okay. Um, this one actually came with some little pretty sequins. Look at that. Oh, how cute. Okay. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to cut, um, let's see. I always do this backwards. This is hammer mill, um, hammer mill cover stock. It's very smooth. It's what I use for my markers. It's what I use for ink blending. Um, let's see, what am I doing here? I think I'm going to cut it, I think I'm just going to cut it down the middle for right now. Sometimes that's the easiest, you know, just to get it into more manageable pieces. If I actually like the background that we're playing with, then I will cut it down to, um, a little bit smaller into like a five by seven card base. But, um, I like to start a little bit bigger. And then, you know, that way you can pick and choose what part of it you want. Um, let's see. I'm not going to play with the die cuts today. So let me get them out of the way. Um, I do want to play with these. Alrighty. So let's start with... I have my Misty right here. Um, this is maybe going to be kind of all over the place, but I at least want to get this in place. I like it right opening. I guess if you're left-handed, you might want it the other way. Um, hmm. Where do I start? Okay. But I just thought you might like to see it actually stamped and what it looks like and... We're gonna obviously have to move it around if we're going to make a background with it. Um, I was going to use my Distress Oxide inks because I have them in many colors, but I know that I can't, if I do decide to go back and color them with my alcohol markers, my Copics, I can't use those with the Distress Oxides, I do not believe. Um, I could be wrong, and I, I don't know. I might test it on with one of my older, cheaper markers. But for today, I'm going to use... I have the Pink Fresh sets. Um, now, these I actually got for Christmas. Got the whole set. I was so excited. And it's just the little, the little ink cubes. But it's the first time I've had the whole set of anything. So here we go. I think I can find some colors to choose from. Now these blend, you know, like with a blending brush or whatever also, but you can just use them to stamp with. So I think, um, and I do actually have these swatched. I do not have them within arm's reach, but, uh oh, my magnet is, yeah, stuck to my magnet here. 
Okay, well see, they even have a color called peach, so I think we're on the right track. And clementine obviously would be good. Lemon whip, um, that might actually be what I start with. Let's see, I'm gonna put this one up because I don't think we will need that. We might. And let's see. Oh, I think I, yep, one of my magnets is still attached. Oh, I put these in, in any of the little cubes. This is the Distress, um, this is Tim Holtz or Ranger, I guess, a Ranger product. The Distressed Ink Storage Tin. And I have these for my small Distress Ink cubes as well. But these, I think any of these little, what are they, two inch cubes or one inch cube, whatever they are. Anyway, they all fit just in case you didn't know that. So, let's start. This is always the, the part that I, um, you know, if you just start, sometimes it, you get out of your head and onto the paper. And even my husband the other day, when I said something about I, I hate to, you know, about wasting paper or whatever, especially expensive paper, watercolor paper, whatever. And he's like, dear, we can get you more paper. I said, okay. So it's almost like that gave me just a little, that little nudge of, if you want to call it permission, it really isn't, but you know what I mean. It uh, just gave me that little nudge that says, you know what, I just need to play. And because you don't always start with an idea in mind, and, you know, mm, trying to decide if I want the whole lemon or if I'm just going to keep this, the slices. What do we think? Um, I actually was thinking if I just keep it the slices, then I might stamp this separately and put it on top. Um, I also have a die, not right here, right the second but I have a die that's a lemon. And so I'm thinking long, you know, this would be a great background for that. Um, let's see, what do you think about this maybe? Um, the idea is if we stamp, there's gonna be a lot of moving of these stamps um, just to cover the whole background. And I actually might want to um, I'm trying to think I might run it off the page just, no, I'm not. I was going to run it off the page or scoot it away from the edge so that I could run these off the page, but I forgot I have to cut down this, this paper later. So I'm just going to butt it up in the corner and then we should be able to, after we stamp these, we should be able to rotate the paper and get some of that and then we'll just fill in. Um, but this, like I said, this is just a little test run here just to see. So I'm just going to pick up the stamps and it's going to move. Um, it, it's going to take your paper with you the first time until these stamps get conditioned. And I have this little chamois. It's very damp or it's slightly damp. Um, and it's what I use to clean my stamps with, but when you have a new, um, these are polymer. Oh, I forgot what they're made out of. But anyway, um, they have kind of just a little bit of a film on them. And there's several different ways that you can condition them. Um, one of which is just rubbing your finger on it. The other of which is just using them. And that's one beauty of having the stamp positioner is that you can stamp in the same spot multiple times and that helps to, you know, helps to condition them as well. Now, if you're a seasoned card maker, you already know all of those things, but there are a lot of new people that, because I'm still new and I thought that maybe this would help people who, you know, you just don't know what all the things are and what they're for. And so you just never know 
who you're giving new information to. So, um, I don't always take for granted that people know, you know, that people know all this stuff because I surely didn't until recently. So, I'm going to start with, this is a light, um, I think it was the lightest out of the colors. Um, I'm going to start with this and then we'll work our way up because that's the other thing about the stamp position or the misty is that you can, you know, you can keep adding layers and you can add shadow or, um, you know, like if I want to come back and make the rind, the outer parts darker, I can do that. Or if you want to add some shading, shading was the word I was looking for. Okay, see, it's gonna still pull the paper up, but that's why we put it, you just pick it back up and make sure it's back in this corner and it should stamp back in the same place. But aren't those cute? Even just the, that's my very first stamp with it. And look how good that is. Um, I'm going to do it one more time. And then I'm going to um, get my, my blending brushes and we're gonna see if we can add some shading to this before we move the stamps and start on our next, next set. Okay, look at how clear those are. She has a very good quality stamp, um, very good quality stamp set. Okay, I got my blending brushes, and these I use specifically for the Pink Fresh. I have this little washi tape on them so that I know, um, and then I kind of have them color-coded. Um, I have another set that I use with, like, my Oxides and my Regular Distress. I don't have enough of them yet. I think I got these cheap off Amazon. Um, they might have been like $9.99 for a dozen of them or something. Um, all the companies have their own, and they have some great ones. But anyway, the other thing I have is these, and they look horrible because I've used them for a very long time. Um, these are little finger daubers, and I, these are ones that I use with my oxides. You don't want to mix oxides with other inks. I do know that. Um, and I might use this if I want to just get in that center. And again, this is not, this is not um, anything I've come up with. Let's see, what color? What color do we want? Actually, I think it kind of looks good the way it is. Hmm. Um, let's just try the next darker yellow just to see if we can get some depth. And I'm gonna use the, the finger dauber here just because I feel like I can get a little bit more control I might try to, let's see, trying to stay within my workspace here. Let me move some things. There, how's that? Um, I might, let me see if I can actually, I might actually be able to get the outer um, rind, maybe just to, to darken it up a hair. Now, this is fussier than you may want to do. I just am having fun doing it, so I'm not in a hurry today. Um, yesterday's video, I needed that card like pronto. So, um, I'm gonna wipe off this extra. I don't think it will matter, but all right, let's, let's try this and see what it does. Um, I try to have everything in my reach because it's, it's a little more difficult than it used to be just to get up and run across the room and get something else. So when I don't have, you know, when I have everything I need right here, it just makes such a, a little compact space. Let's see, can we tell that we did that? 
I think a little bit. I think it might have brightened up. Um, might have brightened up the rind a little bit. Let's see. This would be this space over here. That might have not gotten it. I just think this is fun. Um, we create not just for the end product. We create for the enjoyment value, right? So why not get a little creative when you have the time? I was, um, let's see, like I said, I'm not in a hurry today. I don't have to go anywhere. It's raining, so why not? I really like that. I think we can tell just a little bit. I don't know if you can. I think I can really tell that I added a little bit darker to the outside. Now, let me see what this does if I want it to add it to um, the inside. So I get just a little bit on that dauber and then I'm just gonna go in the circle like this in the center. Maybe a little right here, a little right here. And by using a blending brush or the dauber, you're not gonna have, or you shouldn't have those um, harsh lines because you're, you're blending it. So there shouldn't be a harsh line when we get done. And let's see. Well, they're still sticky. Alrighty, we might have to go a little darker with that. I was erring on the side of moderation here because you can always add. It's just harder to take away, right? All right, so let's see if that did it. Um, okay, I can see a little bit of difference. I don't want drastic. I don't want a whole lot. It just gives it some, gives it some depth. I thought I'd add a voiceover here and speed this up. Um, I decided to change the colors here. I, I decided to make the larger slice an orange and um, add some, you know, orange slices and also um, throw in some green and make some limes. Um, this way it made a full citrusy background, um, very colorful. Um, I really, really am liking the way it turned out. And I thought I would just speed this process up. It didn't take me that long, but you know, I went back and forth for a little bit. So at full speed, it would have um, seemed like forever. So anyway, um, just thought I would chime in there. Let's see what we think. I think it's kind of cute. Um, definitely needs something in the Let's see, let me put my stuff back. I think it needs something in between some of them. So I could add, could add some of these flowers. I don't know what color um, citrus flowers are. I should know that. I actually do have a small lime tree and a small lemon, no, a small lemon tree and a clementine. Hmm, okay, so without masking, which I'm not going to, not on this card, I'm um, just trying to see if I can squeeze any of that one in there. That one would fit, this little one would fit. What do we think? Do we need to bother with that? Hmm. Um, we could move it. I don't know. None of them are actually going to come off of the lemon. I think maybe we should wait and keep these for the um, the piece that that's going to go on top here. Um, still not sure how exactly I'm going to use this. I know I'm going to cut it down. So let's break these out again. I'm not gonna do this right this second, but I was just showing you kind of what my thought process is. Um, so this way you can kind of 
go, okay, I kind of like that section better or this section. A um, little more space in here than I want. But it's not horrible. I actually think I would just take it like right out of the middle. Because then if we, let's say we stamp a couple of these, one in a lemon, one in a lime, and we cut them out, and then we put them on top. Okay, so let's hold on to this. And then we're going to bring the stamp positioner back. I'm gonna take this little wedge off of here. And I'm gonna get the whole lemon. And see what we want to do here. I'm going to spin this back around this way. Now, these don't have to be in any particular place on the card because we're going to cut this out. So I'm going to come back here with my magnets. I'm going to just put it down as close to the edge as I can. Now, I will tell you this. This is a solid stamp. Solid stamps. Um, solid meaning it doesn't have lines to it necessarily. It's just all one solid, solid piece. They are a little trickier. Um, I'm still going to start with this small or the lighter lemon color. But see how the whole stamp is one solid, solid piece? And that is especially, see how it beads up on it? So until it's conditioned, see it kind of left that. Um, that is also where your distress oxides are good, I do believe. Um, I have some VersaFine inks. I don't know if I have a lemon or a yellow color in that. Um, let me see if I can prime this just a little bit better. And uh, this, these might not be the inks. I've never tried this with these inks. But we're going to give it a whirl and see if we can get a little bit more of a solid, solid stamp out of that. I think we are. And you know that little beading, I think we'll still be able to see it, but it looks, look at it. It actually worked out quite well because it actually gives it a little bit of texture. Um, now, I also see a bubble, and that will come out in your stamp as well. Let's see. I don't want to move it. I'm going to do a little bit of shading. Let's see. Let's see if I can dab that on so it's not harsh lines. Yeah, that definitely gave it a little bit of shading, didn't it? Okay. Um, I think we need another lemon. So I will flip this around instead of moving that stamp. Let's flip this around. Not sure. Not sure. I see a bubble in there, but I'm that might be part of the stamp. Okay. Let's see. But I'm thinking I want two lemons and two limes. So see how much more even this is gonna actually go on this time? Um, just getting your stamp conditioned. And let's do it one more time. And then we'll go back and we'll add the, the shading to it. See, as long as you keep your paper in that same spot, you can just keep stamping over and over and over. And let me use this outer 
darker for the outer color or the outer part of the lemon. Okay. I like it. And now let's do a couple limes. The orange, if I decide to do an orange, I might have to use the big orange slice. Or I can do what, what I was talking about earlier and do a like a little two inch, inch and a half, two inch circle punch. Uh, or I have circle dies and then I can make the little, um, I keep wanting to call it a belly button. It's not a belly button. It's a, it's a little belly button on the orange. You know where the, well, I think I say that because it's, you think of a navel orange. Um, anyway, it's where the stem is attached. Okay. It did not take long at all to condition that stamp. And it has a little bit of, see that texture right there? That's actually built into the stamp. It's got a little bit of texture along that section. And one more time, just because we can. Okay, that looks good. Now, I'm going to, oh, oh, I just bumped you. Now I actually bumped the camera that time. I'm gonna see, this might be too dark. But I'm gonna use just a little bit of it on one edge and see if that's too dark. I don't know, what do you think? Maybe a little bit, but I think I kinda like it. Um, I know what I'm gonna do though. Am I where you can see, or I keep inching over this way? I'm gonna take my green blending brush, and I'm just gonna blend it out just a hair, so that it's not so dramatic. And yeah, it actually just gives a little bit of, little bit more texture. I think I kinda like that. All right. So let's flip the paper around and do it one more time. Oh, I think that one looks really good. I like it. What do you think? Okay, I did find a circle punch. It's a larger one than I wanted. It's two and a quarter inch. Um, a little bigger than I wanted, but I did do this on camera. It just, the camera wasn't rolling. Um, so you know how that goes. This is the little stamp that I kept calling a belly button earlier. Anyway, that's that's what it does. It creates that little spot on the orange. I'm not sure I debated on what color to stamp it. Um, really didn't want something as harsh as black, but it, it's what I had um, close by, so it is fine. Um, the other thing I did do off camera is I took my, oops, sorry my two larger or the two largest um, frame dies or the, you know, for the backgrounds. Um, I don't, I haven't, nor I don't normally mat, but I felt like this, you know, would work. So I didn't do the largest ones. I did this one and then I, you know, you know, you know. So I made a orange background. The I had a little bit of green paper and it really would have really looked probably better maybe. Um, however, I didn't have a whole lot of it. And I had a thought, I also had stamped a couple of the leaves that came in that set, but I wasn't 100% sure that I really wanted to use those. Um, I am gonna go ahead and color them in. Um, and then, you know, while I'm fussy cutting the, the, what are those things? Lemons and limes. 
Um, while I'm cutting those, I will, you know, I might cut around these and see, see if I want to use them. But, um, yeah. So I thought I would just color these leaves in real quick. And, because I know that this video is getting long. But, and these are Copics. Um, this is YG13. For anybody wanting to know, I don't know that this was the best color combination, but it is what I pulled out of, it's what I pulled out of the, the storage container. It was the first thing that caught my eye. This one actually looks a little too green. Hmm, this is YG07. And this is not a, um, I'm, I'm not aiming for perfection because I may not use these. Um, if you see the little leaves that are right there, I remember I showed you in the beginning of the video these Lawn Fawn leaves that I got uh, in the same haul. Well, not that, but anyway. Um, I took this biggest one that I was gonna, I was talking about using it for sunflower, uh, for sunflower leaf, and I thought, well, I don't know if it's the right shape. I did go out and look at my, um, I keep wanting to call it a lime tree because it's the only little piece of fruit on it is, um, it's just small and green. So I keep calling it a lime. It's a lemon tree, but, um, and you know, the leaves are probably similar to this shape, but they're, you know, bigger than that. I don't know. I don't think, I think that's splitting hairs, don't you think? So I'm not going to worry about it. If I did cut a couple of those, if they look better when I go to put the card together, or I'm probably not gonna finish the card today um, that was YG05, by the way. Probably not going to finish the card today, but I just want to make the card base, or not the card base, the back, what would this be? The card panel, card front. Anyway, then when you need it, you have it, you just glue it to a card base or stamp your sentiment and be done with it. Um, I am going to, um, oh, but I was looking at this and maybe even just one. Let's see, can you see that? I don't know. Um, you can tell me what you think. I'm going to cut these lemons. I know that in proportion, um, that orange is probably too big. Glasses, hold on, time out. All right, let's try this again. Um, it, in, you know, in relation to these lemons and limes, that orange is probably a little too big. Um, I know that oranges are typically bigger or they can be bigger, especially a navel orange, ha huh? um, Anyway, we'll see how it looks when it comes together. And, you know, if I don't finish it, if I don't put it all the way together, I still have all the ingredients, right? I still have all of this stuff. And, you know, sometimes I just have to come back to a project. Um, sometimes I'll just play and work on part of it, a background or, um, you know, maybe just the little coloring and cut out or die cut pieces or, you know, have a little bowl full of the little flowers or something. And, um, then the mood will strike me and I'll have an idea and then I'm like, oh, and it just comes together like that without being like a forced, you know. Um, these are a little trickier because the stems are, I mean, the lemon and lime are easy to cut out. Um, this is still a little bit of a struggle for me. So I was trying to avoid, yeah, I think I'm gonna avoid this. 
Um, I was trying to avoid this, actually. Um, you know, fumbling around with these scissors on camera. Um, yeah, I'm gonna stop. Let me see if I can make do with what I have. Um, I have the orange. I cut out one of each of those. Um, I am gonna probably need, let's see, that orange is so big. Really wish, I think a two inch would have been perfect. Um, like a little fruit salad. Okay, so here's another trick. It, it's not a secret, but it's a trick. If you, um, when you go to fussy cut around something, you know, it, it's almost impossible to get right up to the line without cutting off part of your image. So uh, this is not ideal to do. It probably is not good for my Copics to do that. I usually try to use different, you know, my, my cheaper markers, I guess. Um, this will work, I think. Anyway, um, this just gives it a little bit of definition. You can't see the white, you know, because most paper has like a white core anyway. So it, it hides that as well. So, and I'm, I'm not even pressing, so I doubt it's hurting my marker. And you can, that's the thing about the Copics too. They, you can replace the nibs on them. Um, kind of thinking like this, if I cover it, uh, it keeps the orange from looking so big. Um, I'm thinking that I almost wish that I'd have put that up here a little bit, or I don't use it as a leaf. I just, you know, cause it doesn't have a stem, right? So if I just put these little leaves around it like this, actually, I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's see, I don't want them too matchy matchy, you know, all together. Um, that actually worked out pretty well, I think. The little leaf die. And, and it kept me from fussy cutting that little stem. The teeny tiny pieces are still hard. But I think I like that. Um, and if you don't know the little press and seal trick, let me get a little piece of press and seal and I'll show you. I just happen to have one pretty close by. Okay, I had to get up and get it, but. And it may or may not have dust or something on it, but we'll just ignore that part. I had it sitting kind of sticky side up. Um, if you have layers of, of items that you want to glue down and you you can take a picture of it so that you know where you had it. I mean, this isn't a real complicated layout. I could easily do that again. But I just thought I'd show you this. Um, you lay the press and seal down. Now, this press and seal's been sitting upside down on my counter for several days. So, um, it might not have a whole lot of stick to it, but we'll see. But you push it down like this. And then it comes right off like that. You put glue down here. Let's see. Now I gotta make sure I like that. <laughs> Did we like that? Yeah, I think we like that. It's good enough, huh? So I'm not going to use foam tape or anything. I'm just going to, let's see. You can, you can just glue on the bottom most pieces um, and then put it down and then it will catch each layer at a time. So for example, if I, all I've got is glue on the leaves cause that's the bottom most layer and you can crumple up the paper like I'm doing. Let's see, I might need to stand up. This I don't even have attached yet. So let's see. See if I can get this kind of straight. 
Um, you can also like tape it here and make a hinge when you do that. So right now I'm just gonna give the glue that's on the back of the leaves a few seconds to dry. And in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have glued those leaves all the way down. Yeah, see that's where you'd have wanted that hinge. I was actually thinking I meant to kind of curl them up a little bit. I forgot about that. Well, that's all right. Okay, so the rest of it, I'm just gonna glue down at one time. But you, you get the idea, right? Um, you get the idea, you can do it in layers. If you have a bunch of little layers, like if you're doing a flower or something. Let's see, I've gotta kinda of stand over this. So I know about where I had it. Okay. All right, oop, shaky, shaky, shake. Um, and then you just peel it back like that. Ta-da! That's how you glue down layers. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, I've seen several people do that. I believe Jennifer McGuire is the one who came up with that idea. Um, I believe if I have it correct, I believe her husband even like invented press and seal. So I would believe that she gets total and absolute full credit for that. I just was lucky enough to see it. Um, Cause that, that is a great, 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 great um, time saving trick. If all things had a hack like that. Okay, I am gonna go ahead and glue this down. I'm not huge, I know that if you make cards long enough, you realize that if you're not a foam tape dimension junkie, you are, I, I don't wanna say outcast in the card making community, but I am definitely feel alone in my lack of um, I don't dislike foam tape and dislike dimension. That's not it. It's just I'm not like goo goo over it like some people are. Like they have to have dimension. And maybe that comes in time. I'm still in very new card, new to card making. So, um, anyway, I don't have a card base right here, but that doesn't change the way the front of it will look, right? So what do you think? Um, I think the leaves worked out fairly well. I, I think I kind of like it. There's still some open area here, but I can, um, I even could cut out these other lemons and, or the lemon and lime and, and, you know, have them down this way. I could add another couple leaves if I really felt like it needed it. Um, what I will probably do at some point is add a sentiment. Um, I'm thinking that I would use this. Now, if that space up there really bothered me, then I could put my sentiment there. Now, probably what I will do is stamp this and heat emboss it and then cut around it, fussy cut it, kiss cut it, whatever you wanna call it. Um, or I might not do any of it because I don't know who I'm sending it to yet. So, you know, I could always put hello on it or thank you or, you know, greetings from Florida, right? I mean, you know, hello, citrus, Florida. So, um, but I do like this life would be sour without you. And I would probably put it right there. And that covers up that, uh, well, I don't know if you can see that it covers it up. You see, that would cover up, cover up that little blank spot right there. That's it. And then cut it out. So I definitely won't do that on camera. And I know that this video has been